here to let you know that Atomic Blonde is no perfect movie. So Atomic Blonde takes place in Berlin in 1989, right when the Berlin Wall is about to be torn down, and it centers around an MI6 agent named Lorraine Broughton, played by Charlize Theron, who is sent there to retrieve a list of double agents that has been stolen, which becomes increasingly more difficult when she suspects that her partner, played by James McAvoy, is going to betray her. As is expected from his work in John Wick, David Leach does an incredible job directing the action sequences. There's no shaky cam, there's no quick cut editing at all. Each fight features swift, drawn out takes that show Charlize Theron and the other actors doing all of their own stunts, with a big emphasis on using improvised weapons, things that you could find around your household, or even just articles of clothing. Farron uses things such as a stiletto or garden hose in a fight, and she uses these as weapons to great effect. And each fight scene just looks magnificent, especially this 10 minute long take near the end of the movie where all the actors involved take so many hits, so many falls, you'd swear that this couldn't have been done in one take. And on his own, Leech actually does have a stylish look that really adds a lot of atmosphere for a spy movie. Frequently, characters are seen watching news footage of the tearing down of the Berlin Wall, and then later it's revealed during flashbacks that as they were watching this, something vital to their mission was happening at the same time. And it's a clever metaphor for the distractions a spy must do in order to conceal their identity, or distractions that a spy might fall for. And there's also a lot of really stylish shots of characters looking into mirrors where we see their reflection in their true selves simultaneously. So as an audience, we get to see the act that they're trying to portray and their true selves in just one shot. Charlize Theron not only kicks a lot of ass in this movie, but her performance does add likability to her character. She is incredibly loyal to her agency and is willing to do just about anything to fulfill her mission. She'll even get close to someone and then basically be responsible for their death, and she'll take that burden with her for the rest of her life. But no matter how hard she tries not to get to know any of the other operatives she works with, she always finds something about them that she can connect with. When she first meets Delphine, played by Sophia Butella, her naivete towards working with Lorraine is implied to remind Lorraine of herself when she first became a government agent. Excited to be a spy, thrilled by the challenge, but also unaware of how complex and dangerous it'll soon get. Now at first the story seems fairly simple. There's a list of double agents going around and Lorraine has to investigate them on her own without McAvoy knowing, all while confiding in Sofia Butella as a romantic partner. If that's all the movie was about, it would have been much more fast paced, it would have been easier to follow, and all the characters would have been much more fleshed out. But during the second act of the movie, they show all three story elements that I just mentioned, plus this KGB agent who is trying to sell the list, a defector who is trying to escape Berlin with his family, a CIA agent who, during flashbacks, it's revealed that Lorraine once knew him, and this other CIA agent who is constantly bossing Lorraine around. And none of these other story elements feel as interesting as her investigation of the list, and I think that's because the movie doesn't give an equal amount of time to each plot thread, and as a result, some scenes do really feel boring at times. Atomic Blonde has really exciting, well-filmed, and well-choreographed action scenes, a good lead performance from Charlize Theron, and a really catchy soundtrack, too. There's just too many extra details thrown into the story when the main plot and subplot were simple and engaging enough. But it is still a good movie, and for that reason, I'm going to give Atomic Blonde a 3.5 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, check out my other reviews at noperfectmovie.com. And once again, thank you all very much for watching. Take care.